Hey fellas, long time no see in this exciting episode. We're going to be building Kinetics 148 scale F16B. We're building the B version because I'm going to model it as Doug Masters F16 in the uh, from the movie Iron Eagle. And if you're a kid from the 80s, like I am, and I was really into jets and planes, this was a cool movie. Super corny. I watched it the other day, super corny, but I actually enjoyed it. So uh, this is that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, like I said, long time no see. I haven't posted a video in a couple weeks, but I have been building stuff. Uh, I built a 148 scale Hasegawa F-16 to get me in the F-16 mode, and I put that up on eBay, and it sold. Uh, and then uh, I thought I could probably squeeze in another uh, another build. I had some people ask me if if I uh, commissioned me to build a uh, another Top Gun F-14 Tomcat from uh, from my other video because the last one I did was a commission build. And uh, I guess they decided they probably didn't want it. They didn't respond to any emails. And uh, so I'm just going to just get out of the commission business probably altogether. I'm just going to start building stuff that I want to build. It's more enjoyable for me. And then I'll post post what I build on eBay. So uh, over the next, over the summer and, and the fall, you'll probably see uh, if you're interested in, in buying some of my stuff, uh, you'll see a lot more... Uh, of my models getting posted on on the eBay which I hate selling on eBay because they charge a lot of fees but you know is what it is I don't make a lot of money from it and the money that I do make I usually uh, put it back into modeling stuff equipment and more models so it basically just gets recycled I don't get rich off of it so I'm not trying to sit here and sell you a bunch of stuff I'm just letting you know if you want to buy some of my models so this one is currently for sale on eBay the auction ends Thursday I think it's up to like hundred and fifty three dollars but in my opinion, this is the best fit and finish of any model that I've done. And, you know, that's, that's just my opinion. But it's uh, Maverick and Goose. See there? And uh, I actually use my video, my video series as a reference to refresh my recollection on how exactly I painted everything. So, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the base, here's the base for it. Right there. Um... So, uh, in either way, and, and it's it's really interesting how fast I can build build this. I did, did this in like maybe four or five days, and uh, yeah, it's amazing how fast I can build something with with uh, not filming it. So, either way, if you're interested in and, uh, in that, then uh, check out my eBay auction. I'll post a link to it in the description. So, enough of that salesman crap. Uh, let's get on with the video. All right, for a lot of you uh, Jets and Airplanes fans that grew up in the 80s, you're probably familiar with this movie. But if you haven't, go watch it. Uh, it's about a uh, kid named Doug Masters. He's an Air Force brat. I believe he's in high school. Uh, he he uh, gets rejected into the Air Force Academy. His dad's an F-16 fighter pilot, gets shot down uh, over in the Mideast somewhere, and he gets captured. The government won't go save him. So the kid who's been uh, sneaking in and flying uh, simulators and and flying F-16s with his dad under the uh, and on the down low uh, recruits the help of Lou Gossett Jr., uh, uh, an old uh, an old pilot, and they both go over and try to capture or pick up his dad, and uh, so they each fly uh, an F-16 and they they fly over and Doug Masters ends up. Uh, uh, rescuing his dad and uh, bringing him back home and yay happy ending so kind of a real corny kind of it is it's a it's a real cheesy 80s movie but it's pretty cool so this is what I'm gonna uh, uh, this is what this builds about it's for a guy that uh, is a fan of the movie much like me he was pr probably about the same age so uh, they show on the movie poster these f-16s painted up in the US Air Force colors however uh, what the uh, the movie was not able to use uh, Air Force F-16s. They had to actually go and use the Israeli Air Force F-16s because the U.S. turned them down. So in the movie, they have these Israeli painted with the Israeli camouflage F-16s, and they've painted over the Israeli markings. And so this is this is going to be basically pretty simple as far as the paint job goes. Just the Israeli camouflage, 
Uh, there's a better look at it. Uh, you can see they've painted over that. They've just got the uh, tail letter BA and no, no other markings. You can definitely tell that they painted over stuff. And then they've got some US uh, stars and bars markings on the uh, on the top. They've got it on both the upper surface wings. Uh, that's just a computer generated. Now they used a couple of different, they used the F F F16A, I, I believe it's the A, I don't, I'm not sure. And then the B, so they've got the, the one-seater and the two-seater, but we're doing the two-seater because that's what Doug Masters used to go pick up his dad. So, uh, but here you can see the uh, stars and bars that they put on there. They look kind of faded. They're the actual, uh, the high-vis ones. Now, one issue is, is that they use, like, fictional missiles, and they've got these, I believe they were Mavericks, and they've cut off the, the, uh, the back tail fins here. So uh, what I've done to try to replicate what kind of bombs that they've got on there, and you can barely see it right here, there's what they call a Hades, missile, miss, uh, Hades bomb, which is some kind of a fire bomb. I believe it's um, a Mark 82 Slick, from what I've been told. I believe it's one of these. So um, what I've been able to gather as far as the ordnance that was on the plane, and that's one of the big things, because the rest of it's pretty simple. It's just the camouflage paint, uh, is trying to figure out what bombs that they had. And uh, so I've got two Sidewinders from the kit. I've got two Maverick missiles, which I'm gonna have to alter. And then I've got three Mark 82 bombs that I'm gonna use. One's gonna be the Hades, and then I believe there are two other ones on the uh, the other wing. So that's what I'm gonna work with unless I find out differently. And I stole the uh, Mark 82s from another kit, but there you can see those on the bottom. Or on the, uh, I believe those are on the, um, the left wing, if I'm not mistaken. So that's basically all there is to it. Uh, I've got a base here, and it's gonna be a smaller plane since it is an F-16 uh, at 48 scale. It's a little bit smaller than a lot of my, a lot of my uh, builds. So it should fit on here just like so. But let's take a look at the kit. Let me grab the uh, what I've been working on so far. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm working on. Now, they give you two options. You can have the, the B version, which is what I'm going to use, or the A version. So I'm not going to use any of this stuff. Uh, just working with the two-seater. And um, I'm not a big fan of Kinetic after the CAC Sabre that I built. It's just, I don't know. Um... The detail looks pretty nice. It's pretty fine panel lines. <clears throat> this does have this rough texture, which is okay on this one. On the CAC Sabre that I built, I had to sand all that away because I wanted a natural metal finish. And um, so you got to kind of sand that, that little rough texture. It's not bad. It's, it's almost like the plastic has a matte finish. Um, they do, I think, overcomplicate things with this kit. They have you, like, glue these panels in and... And this stuff, like this gun port here, they have you glue that in, and I don't know why they just couldn't mold that in to begin with. I don't know what the the reasoning is for for having a separate piece. I I, I don't know. I guess it's probably easier to mold that way because there's a hole in it. But uh, and I think they got several different options for for this area right here, right before the nose cone, because I for uh, different blocks, I guess, of the F-16. Now the uh, the instrument instrument panels and stuff on the inside they're okay nothing to write home about uh, I'm gonna get that together first and then uh, work on the exhaust or the uh, intakes which I think might be kind of a pain so I'll probably break for the intakes and show you how all those to go together because I think that's probably one of the main issues in a lot of F16 builds are the intakes and 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 uh, how to get those squared away so. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so let's take a look at these intakes. And they come in two parts. The front part isn't too bad, so let's take a look at this. You've got these two pieces right here, and we can look down in there. They glue together pretty well. 
Um, I think what I'll probably end up doing is taking some Mr. Surfacer and running it right along the seam there and just letting it settle. And that should be good enough for that. And there isn't any, um, there's a couple of ripples in there on the bottom and I don't know if that's gonna show up. But uh, there's no injector pin marks like you see. The injector pin marks are on the outside so you can't see them. However, the rear part of the intakes are pretty bad. Let's take a look at these. <laughs> there's like, I get this a lot with these um, kinetic kits is the injector pin marks. There's plastic that pops up from them. So I've got three injector pin marks on the bottom and the top piece. Now I don't know how much of this you're actually gonna see once it gets um, put together and installed, but I do wanna smooth it out as best that I can. I mean, I'm not gonna devote uh, years to, to trying to clean this up on the inside. Now it is gonna be white, so you're probably, you're gonna be able to see a little bit of it, but uh, it's gonna fit on here just like so. So I don't think you're gonna get a real good view, but I do wanna try to clean it up. And especially with these pieces that I just snipped off of there. So let's, how I typically do this is I've got these real thin sanding sticks and I'm just gonna come in here and try to take this down. Now these are pretty coarse. I forgot what the, uh, what the grit on these blue ones are. In fact, I need to get some more because I'm starting to wear these out. But what's nice with these is I typically sand with the, the tips of them and when it wears out, I can just come in here and snip it off and use the part that isn't worn out. Uh, I got these off eBay. Um, I think they're, I forgot what the name of, of them are, but you can't miss them because they're the only ones that are like real thin like this and they come in a bunch of different grits. But these are good for, for pieces like this that are kind of hard to get into. So I'll just come in here and sand these, smooth this out as best I can. Now I could come in here and, and, and add a little bit of filler and fill it, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's gonna be that noticeable back inside there. I don't, I don't really think you're gonna, I don't really think you need to devote that much effort in it. And just sanding it with these right here seems, seems to, to uh, somewhat smooth them out. Let me come in here with my X-Acto blade and snip this off a little bit more. Just sand away. And then I can come in here with a little more fine one, which is are these yellow ones, and you can see they're really dirty because I use these sometimes when I use my uh, CA metallic pigment, and it really gets your sanding sticks dirty. And I've also even got some more, uh, some even uh, finer ones, these orange colored ones. And come in here and just smooth it out a little bit more. But what's really going to help take care of the roughness in here. In fact, I don't know if you can see that, but right along here, looks like there's some, they're not really scratches, they're raised areas where it looks like the plastic kind of squirted up in these crappy kinetic kits. Which, oh, I don't know that I'll ever make another kinetic kit, but hope not. Not a big fan of them. I will just sand these away. And, but the, the, the good thing about this plastic is it's somewhat soft and it does sand pretty easily is what I found. So hey, that's a plus. I guess it could have been worse. The plastic could have been, uh, could have been, could have had these issues and then it had, had uh, really hard, hard to sand plastic, but. So I guess we lucked out on that. Okay, then what I can do is I can take, well, let's take some Mr. Cement S and you can use any type of, uh, like to me, extra thin, but I like this stuff for this kind of application. So in order to smooth the rest of this out, I'm just gonna run some, some of this along there and it should, smooth down some of my scratches 
and it should give me a nice smooth surface. So now when I put these together after I clean this one up, once I put these together, yikes, I don't want to do that. I can also run an, a bead of uh, Mr. Servicer right along the, the, uh, the seam back in here. And I should be good to go. I think that'll take care of it. I think that will look pretty good. So that's the only issues I see so far with the intakes. If I run into other problems with it, I'll let you know. Uh, the cockpit, it is, uh, it's going together pretty good. The, um, they've got, uh, it's, it's, this is one of those just weird kits where, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's okay. Nothing ex extravagant, um, just your basic cockpit. I mean, I guess it's okay. The seats really sucked. Um, these are really, really, they fit really poorly. Um, you've got the two sides that go together uh, with these posts back here, and they, they don't really fit that well. So what I did is I glued the two sides together with these two posts, and then I stuck them into the, the cockpit to make sure that they were square. And then I glued in the seat, the seat portion here, and it didn't fit real well. So I had to shove it back in there and hold it while I glued it. And there were still some, uh, still some seams and openings and gaps and stuff where the seat met the sides of the ejection seat. So what I did is I just took some sprue goo and spread it along the inside to fill those gaps from the inside. So that way I'm not going to have to do any sanding or anything. And I think that that will suffice. But these were kind of a pain in the butt. They're not, they just don't fit very well. So you just got to work with them. Um, that's about it for this. So I will get on and if I run into any more issues with this, I will uh, let you know. All right, fellas. So for the final part of this video, we'll take a look at the pilot. Now I stole this one from an A10 Warthog kit. I think it was a Rebel kit. And uh, because the kinetic one doesn't supply you with a pilot and I need a little Dougie Masters. Now this is a two-seater, but uh, I'm modeling this as right before Dougie went in to get his, uh, his pops. And so he's going to be the only one in the plane. Now I took his arm and I uh, set him in there and moved it just a little bit and glued it on. So it would uh, come close to touching the controls in the F-16. So I, I've glued it on with sprue goo, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, carving and shaping once this dries, but I've got him pretty close to where I want him. And I also added, because Doug Masters in the movie has a little Walkman that he keeps on his leg. I believe it was his left leg here. And uh, he keeps it on there, and whenever he wants to do like really good jet fighting stuff, he turns on his music, and uh, it plays through his uh, earphones. So uh, I've got, I just took a little piece of uh, spare part that I've got with a little with some buttons and stuff on it and uh, glued it on his left leg there and I may put some wires in there. Uh, I don't know how much of that you're actually going to see. Yeah, you might see it because there's the, the canopy is pretty wide open on the, uh, on the F-16. So I got him uh, working and now what I'm going to do, I think I've run over this before, but I've got the two parts of the intake glued together. And I'm going to show you what I typically do with uh, how I take care of the seams within, within these um, intakes. So I've got my Mr. Servicer 1000. And you know what? I might thin this down a little bit. I've got two jars of this. So it doesn't matter if I thin this one down. So I'm just going to take some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and I'm going to shoot some of this in there just so I can get it a little thinner because I do want it to flow and settle. And again, I think I've went over this in another video, but this is the easiest way I've found to do it. And it's one of those things if you're wanting a, um, an extremely clean intake, um, you just have to work with this a little bit. It'll get you there. But with something like this, I think this will be good enough with one or two applications on each side to, uh, to clean up that seam. And we'll again take a look at it right there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little dropper here. And I'm going to just let this flow down inside. 
that seam just like that. And then I'll prop it up here on my little makeshift prop so that when it dries, it has a chance to settle in there and it'll slowly build up into that seam. And I won't have to do any sanding because I don't wanna to have to try to get in here and sand this stuff. Now you could get in here and sand it. These aren't too bad, but uh, I don't think that's really gonna be necessary. Now, I've done the same thing in this one. Now this does shrink a lot. So uh, it will probably take two, maybe three applications, I think, for it to get to a point where I'm happy with it. And that's all there is to it. It's just a matter of being patient and letting that uh, settle down and dry and then just reapplying it. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to try to keep these a little bit shorter because I did go a little bit long on the last uh, uh, video series that I did. So try to keep them around 20 minutes. I uh, appreciate you watching and uh, I will see you on the next episode.